Hello everybody. Uh, this is an update on the new rotor platform that I built and a test of the Pringle coil. That coil right there. If I can get it focused. That's a 13 uh, those are 13 pancake coils stacked. Coils just like that. Two inch pancake coils. Well, just like that. 13 of those and then they're formed into a U-shape to conform or uh, closely engage the rotor magnet. That's one inch rotor magnet. So the new platform that I built is made out of half inch Lexan. It's got, um, it is 12 by 8 inches in dimension. It's a little bit bigger than the enclosure that I have so the enclosure lid will no longer go on top of it. Um, it's still sitting on the bottom, the base of the enclosure and there's nylon bolts that are bolting it all together and through the inch and a half plywood that I have there. Um, so far I'm very happy with it. Looks pretty nice and it it's, do, it's suiting its purpose, serving its purpose pretty well. Um, the dimensions worked out great. I was really shocked how well things worked out. Um, the whole idea was that I make my coils the correct height and have this base fixed. Originally I was going to try and make my coil or my uh, bearings adjustable, the height adjustable. That didn't work out very well. So I came up with this idea and I of course showed you a bunch of slides before this video. Uh, the construction process and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run this thing off battery from the controller right there and I've got a meter set up there that's set on volts but I'm going to be measuring the current using that because I've got 10 1 ohm resistors in parallel which would give me one or one yeah one tenth of a of, uh, ohm and just got to do the conversion it'll measure in milli volts well it'll be milliamps instead so and back there I have a meter set up to measure the uh, generate par generator part of this uh, motor generator that's storing the back EMF and the AC signal that's generated in the off portion of the pulse DC cycle. So this is a pulse DC motor and when it's off it allows the AC through through some diodes, recovery diodes, and it's stored in that capacitor along with the back EMF. Um, I also have the scope set up here so we can see the top traces um, set at one volt per division and that's going to demonstrate this coil. This is a this is two quarter inch foil uh, pancake coils stacked running series. I'm going to use that as a generator. I'm just going to physically Put that on top of that rotor magnet there and we're going to generate a little bit of electricity kind of demonstrate uh, how much torque this uh, particular coil develops um, it's not as fast as what I was hoping it's nowhere near as fast as well I haven't tested that one yet but that's a replacement for my burn up coil so my original coil that I burn up you know, topped out at about 90,000 RPM. That's not, that was never on video, but I showed it going about 76 or 
thousand RPM it's not a far stretch to uh, imagine it going a little bit faster at 90,000 RPM. This one here, the fastest I've had it going is 14,000 RPM. I'm not going to try and do that. I'm just going to uh, run it off of 24 volts and we're going to take a look at the signal and the RPM and all that business. Uh, but I'm going to set up for that now and I'm going to shut off the recording and come back. There's a couple things that I wanted to say just before I uh, show the demonstration video of the Pringle motor in action. Um, first off, I want to give a shout out and a thank you to my friend KB who provided the music at the or during the slideshow at the beginning of the video. Um, we were stationed in Field Station Augsburg. I'm showing a little picture of that. Uh, and um, I also want to say that the platform, the size of the platform, um, is 12 by 8, and I made it larger than necessary because I want to mount experiments off to the right hand side. Not only that, but it'll give me the ability to mount other coils on the top side. Um, the image that I'm showing now is an image that I really kind of pasted, cut and pasted together um, just to kind of give you an idea of what I'm talking about. I'll have a magnetic gear um, coupling the experiments off to the right hand side and I have a number of experiments that I'm planning on doing but that just kind of gives you an idea what it'll look out or look like uh, laid out. So on with the testing. Okay, I'm set up now. The first thing I want to do is demonstrate, of course, that we have zero amps running right now. And I want to show how much current draw I have when I just turn this on and we're idling. We're not even, we're not turning the motor at all. So, on with that. And we see that we have 0 0.9, 0 0.9 millivolts, which would be 0 0.9, it uh, would be 90 milliamps. So 90 milliamps is what the draw is from that motor. If I turn the fan on, we're going to have a larger draw. I'll turn that on real quick. I'm not going to run it during the course of this. but. You see suddenly we have 1.9, uh, 1.8 millivolts, 1.8, 1.9, so, so we have 180 milliamps running through the point amp, or point 0.1 ohm resistor that's in series with the uh, batteries to the circuit. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and press any key to continue. Pardon the angles, but it's just going to be easier if I do it this way. And um, I, I just want to give this demo and do it quickly. So I'm going to press any key to continue, and I have to press three to start. Now this is a not a self-starter. And the other thing is, is I've got this box right here where I've got the power to the coil switch. So I've got, I've got to turn that on too. So we're now in the run mode. I'm going to give this a spin. There we go. Okay. Now we see that we're at 260 millivolts or 2.6. It's 260 milliamps. And I'm going to turn off the fan. And right now, we are running at about, about 6,000 RPM. I'm just 
going to read it to you. It says 100 hertz. So 100 hertz times uh, 60 is going to be uh, for 6,000 RPM. And that's measuring quite well. We're comparing quite well to that. Which is at 5928. We're not quite at 100 hertz. We're at 98.6. Okay. So. See that we have 30 volts, but the thing about it is, if I adjust this hall sensor, our RPM is going to go up, and we're going to get a lot more power generated. Not a lot because this thing doesn't generate a lot to begin with. So let me go ahead and adjust that. And now we're up to about 6,500 RPM and 170 volts. 270, 280 milliamps. So we pay the price for generating that extra voltage there. There's nothing for free here. Really, the only good thing that I can see about this uh, coil is that it's got a lot of torque. That's because of its close proximity and how it wraps around the rotor magnet. I'm going to turn out this light. And we Maybe we'll have a bit, little bit better picture there. Hopefully. Okay. So what I've got is I've got set up is this pancake coil. Just going to make one connection. the big drag on it. Big drag. I'm going to bump up the duration. And adjust the hall sensor a little bit. So now we're running at about 7200 RPM. Now I'm going to This is across a 1 ohm resistor, I didn't mention that. So, we've got about a half a volt across that. It's about 500 milliamps then. I've had an amp and better across that. That 1 ohm resistor. So you would, have, you would see a uh, 2 volt peak to peak signal on the screen if I had it adjusted properly. But this is just for demonstration purposes to show that this coil can develop some torque. And our current right now, we're at, we're at about an amp. So right now we're generating about a half an amp uh, across that one ohm resistor. Not a lot. Well, there's nothing free here. Just demonstrate.
demonstrating the torque. And I'm going to put my finger on this. I'm pushing. There, I can stop it. Shut that off so you hear me a little bit better. I'm going to um, adjust the gap, play around with the gap between the rotor motor, I mean the rotor magnet and the coil. Right now it's about a 16th inch gap. Um, so I think I'm going to put some shims in, in between the, the base of the uh, enclosure, which is the wood, and the Lexan and kind of raise up the whole platform and um, see if increasing the distance between the magnet and the coil will speed it up any and I also have a, a three-quarter inch rotor magnet that I can put in place there of the one inch diameter rotor magnet and see what difference that makes uh, that's all I have to show today. I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks.